Hello there brothers and sisters, Timothy here coming at you once again with another book review. I feel like I'm on a really good book streak at the moment. Uh, I've definitely had a, a big dry spell just over a year ago, but since getting into the, the right theme of genre that I've enjoyed, it's just led me from one book to another. And so this one is actually probably the, the most page turning book I read last year in terms of I couldn't wait to get into bed to keep reading this story. It's written by A. Farnese, but it was is once again a channeled book, channeled from a spirit called Francesco. Not sure when Francesco was alive, sometime in between the year 1000 and 1700, maybe, I don't know, maybe 1400, 1500 he was around. Um, but this, sorry Francesco, if you, <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but um, it was written in 1896 and the, the language isn't too jarring. I imagine it's a similar-ish story to Dante's Inferno, Dante's comedy, if if you've read that book or you're into that kind of theme, but essentially it's a spirit who was alive on earth as a human and then died, went to the spirit world, was kind of shocked at the place, the, the consequence of their life choices on earth, put them uh, in a place in the spirit world that they were, which isn't the most nicest place to be essentially. Um, and it was their journey basically from being in the hells or the lower realms of the spirit world, not the complete hells I don't think, but the lower realms of the spirit world and working their way up to the higher, higher, more loving, joyful planes of the spirit, of the, the higher spheres of the spirit world. And just before he, this Francesco died, he was in a really intensely loving relationship with a, a woman much younger than him who he fell deeply in love for her, her and she fell in love with him. And that love kind of drove his, it was a central thread that I don't want to ruin the story, but it helps him to really like focus on why he needs to repent and undo his life choices on earth basically and work through the cost of, of what he owes with that stuff. And it's just a, another story that I've read on that theme of the spirit world that's a completely different source to all the other sources that just feeds that same awareness of perspective of what happens in you know, the afterlife, the spirit world, hereafter, the great beyond, through the veil, whatever you want to call it. It just helps you to gain that knowledge and that perspective of, of, of why it's important that we are loving and we strive for spiritual progression and soul development whilst on earth so that we're not a surprise. And it's a theme, it's a story that's given me so much more faith in the, in the like we can always talk about the crazy times on earth right now. There's a lot to be disheartened about and to know that there's more to to go. This is just the kindergarten chapter of life. This life on earth is, is that small phase. And as I mentioned previously, the only thing we had to do is learn love and we can learn that in any circumstances. And actually, it's e I don't know if it's easier, but yeah, it's the, the current circumstances are, are in igniting us to learn that more than ever and so this is just another story that really just fueled me to continue on that path and it like I say it's a page turner um, as this one man works through his kind of karmic spiritual debt back to to uh, to earn his house in a loving land um, and just the different tests he faces on the way his journey into groups with a brotherhood where they go out on these spiritual quests to the lower spheres to, he goes back to earth to help people on earth that is, have similar uh, unloving passions and desires that he acted out on earth as well as going to the hells to try and help people in those lower realms who may have a glimmer of hope in them that they're kind of tired of living in that world and want to repent is a word that we'll talk about another time but you know is, is that's the most accurate word that are willing to actually face the some of their sins of their actions of their unloving actions that they've done and start to work their way out and so he goes to these lower realms to try and help them and it's essentially him paying working you can call it karmic debt or you know that might be a language that makes sense to people working through his spiritual costs there's elements that i'm sure of the spirit world that are very hard to translate into our physical perspective um, but it does a really good job of making you feel not like yeah almost like you're there obviously the darkness of some of it you know in the lower realms 
it's going to be quite intense, but it does a really good way of, of helping you visually become aware of that, the kind of journeying through the the spirit realms, into the hells, into some of the, the places he goes. He goes to cities in the spirit world that are replicas of cities on earth. All the cities on earth are actually replicas of the cities in the spirit world, whichever way it works. Um, but like I say, it just really emphasizes the the importance of being and becoming more loving now and why to wait and you know why to start that journey before we get to the afterlife and so I got a few quotes from the book uh, it, once again I had 10 pages of quotes I read it on my Kindle which is just really useful you know um, because you highlight highlight the quotes and then you can just send all the quotes from this one book to my thing and I've got 10 pages of quotes that I to sift through and I could literally I would like to read every one of them because they're actually all really good stuff but um few different themes of quotes that I've got to share now. Um, and so the first one is, uh, yeah, shortly after he died, uh, and as Francesco went to visit his, uh, his beloved, so this is the quote. He assured me, even as the kind earthly man had done, that my deformed body, which I was still so anxious to hide from my beloved one's eyes, would change as my spirit changed. So that's speaking on the fact that your spirit body shows the truth of your soul's condition a lot more than our physical bodies do, although our physical bodies do as well. Your spirit body is even more an expression of your soul's true condition. So all the loving and unloving that's stored in your soul. And so he went to see his his beloved on earth and wanted to visit her and she was starting to develop her mediumistic skills, I think, at this point and wanted to see it. But she was, he was stopped from seeing her by her I think it was her older brother had died previously and he ended up being her spirit guide. Again, don't want to ruin the story, but it's, really, it's such a cool like dynamic with the whole thing, the way the whole thing is, is laid out and it's not too long a book. But essentially he went to see his beloved and he, but he knew how ugly his spirit body appeared compared to how his physical body was that she was in love with and he was kind of scared of her to see him. But he assured this, her spirit guide, her brother who had passed, assured Francesco that as his spirit changed, as his soul developed, as he repented for everything he'd done, his so his body would change as well. So he could, he, there was a chance to work a way better to get that improved, basically. And so here's another quote further down, much further in the story, but after he'd worked through some of his stuff. In this state of unconsciousness, I lay for about two weeks of earthly time, and during it, my soul passed from the disfigured astral body and came forth like a newborn child clothed in a brighter, purer, spiritual envelope, which my efforts at overcoming the evil in myself had created for it. So that was him speaking on after he'd gone through a big phase of soul development, of, of spiritual development. His body kind of had this rest period and then and grew from that. And he talks about, Then I went to the window and looked out over the country and those long rolling hills, treeless and somewhat bare, save for their covering of grass and ferns. I looked upon this scene. It was so like and yet unlike earth, so strangely bare and yet so peaceful. My eyes, long wearied with those lower spheres, rested in joy and peace upon this new scene, and the thought that I had thus risen to a new life filled me with a thankfulness of heart unspeakable. So this was just after he'd gone from like the really lower spheres to slightly higher so he's again it still says it's quite bare and treeless so it's not the nicest place you can imagine like paradise heaven kind of you'd imagine right but it's still much nicer than because your your where you can go in the spirit world is determined by your soul condition and so he was living in the lower sphere until he worked through his his the thing the, the cost of his, his actions he was in a much darker place, it was darker, dimmer, less greenery around him and he'd gone through this stage of growth after all this work and he was like, just felt so relieved at the peace of just seeing some kind of greenery that was like earth and yet unlike earth as we can't fully imagine what the spirit world is like. But he just, yeah, filled him with thankfulness and heart unspeakable for that, like, you can imagine the relief of being in the hells and just finally getting to some semblance of, of a peaceful uh, countryside and place. And then finally from, this, from the same scene. At last I turned from the window 
and seeing what was like a small mirror near me, I looked to see what change there might be in myself. I started back with an exclamation of joy and surprise. Was it possible? Could this be as I appeared now? I gazed and gazed again. This myself. Why? I was young again. I looked a man of about 30 or 35. Not more certainly. And I beheld myself as I had been in my prime on earth. And that's one of the things I've heard come from several different sources. Divine Truth and, and other, st other books as well. Um, which I'm going to review later. Which talks about in the spirit world you age down to your prime age and he says 30 35 often i heard people say about 25 we we kind of imagine i think is 25 is about the prime of life so around that period and maybe he's not fully completed his spiritual uh de development to that yet but yeah i heard i don't know maybe the second sphere or you know just beyond the first sphere i don't really know but as you develop you age backwards to the prime of your life as I kind of stated there so I just think that's a really interesting theme we think oh you die you're 80 you're how you know are you in the spirit world what are you a ghost are you what's your body look like and it just makes logical sense that that there is you know to me anyway after I've heard it from enough sources it's like yeah that makes sense that if you are going to live potentially eternally in the spirit world that you would go to the, the peak age, but it doesn't just happen automatically to everyone. You have to earn the capacity through lessons in love and soul development, which is a theme of all of this stuff, um, to have that right to live in that, you know, prime of your life condition again. So next part, this is when he visits um, one of the cities he used to frequent on earth. I think he's Italian man. In short, in this Venice, as in the other cities I had seen, there existed a life akin to that of earth, save that from this place, all the good and pure and true. All the real patriots and unselfish citizens were gone, and only the evil left to prey upon each other and act as avenging spirits to their companions in crime. So this is one thing I kind of learned from this book, and I think I saw it it's in another book since then, was that this, there are cities on in the spirit world that I mentioned for, earlier, are the replicas of the cities on earth, except depending on what sphere it's in. And I think I've talked about this in one of the podcasts recently. He go, I think he goes to another city. He doesn't actually name it. it I was assuming Rome, but it could have been Florence or, or something like that. And it was all the, the crime, as he says, all the, the evil live in that city. And then if you go to a higher sphere, you can visit the same city and then all it'd be the inverse of that where all the, the good and pure and true, the real patriots and unselfish citizens will be in that, in that higher sphere version of that city. And so it's cool um, to learn that, yeah, the cities, you don't really know what you picture in the spirit world. But I was like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense that they would have cities. Oh yeah, then there's, it's multi, you could call it multidimensional, right? So there's, depending on the spirits and the souls, uh, what, where their soul condition is at, depends on what version of the city you can go to. So that, that kind of ties in. And another one he talks about, um, the spirit spheres. Thus then, some will tell you there are seven spheres. You know, they talk about the seventh heaven, right? And that the seventh means the heaven spoken of in the Bible. Others say there are 12 spheres. Others again extend the number. Each sphere is, however, divided into circles, usually 12 to a sphere. Though here, again, some spirits will reckon them differently. Just as your standards of measurement on earth differ in different countries, Yet the thing they measure remains the same. And so he's speaking on the spheres in the spirit world. There's not really a book I'm reading at the moment that doesn't talk about these spheres or dimensions or whatever you want to call it. Um, in Dante's, I've not read Dante's yet. That is on the reading list. I think that has nine chapters for each sphere or each section of, that it goes through the Inferno, Purgatory and, and Paradise. Um, and so this says there's 12, he reckons there's 12 subdivisions of each sphere and that there may be 12 spheres or beyond i think jesus says there's 36 spheres or beyond or maybe beyond 36 spheres now total um although there's the eight is actually the true sense of heaven apparently according to this stuff but yeah you see it throughout all mythology is this seven seventh heaven and these seven spheres seven heavens and the seven hells so it can go each way 
Um, but it's just, it's really interesting to learn. And often when you listen to channeled messages on divine truth, they'll interview spirits and the spirit was, one spirit was saying, I'm in the fifth sphere because they'd hit five progressions, but they weren't actually in the fifth sphere. They were only in the second sphere. And that would make sense that there are subdivisions or spheres with it or, you know, cat circles within the spheres that people can progress through as well. So there's just so much scope to the whole, the whole spirit world is much bigger than our, our earth right now, it seems. Next one. And you would think the gospel of mercy after death too easy a one, too lenient to the sinners. Do you know what it is to suffer all the pangs of an awakened conscience? Have you seen that path of bitter tears, of weary effort, which the soul must climb if it must if it would return to God? Do you do you realize what it means to undo step by step through years of darkness and suffering and bitter anguish of soul? the sinful acts and words and thoughts of an earthly lifetime, for even to the uttermost farthing must the debt be paid. Each must drink to the last dregs the cup that he has filled. Far easier were it for man in his earthly life to undo his misdeeds than if he wait till death has placed his barrier between him and those to whom he would atone. And so, little, you know, dark, <laughs> not as positive but it's a reality check and it's a lesson and it's probably you know a lesson of 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 the of life and of of this book but that we live a life on earth and we are we're just so misled or not focused on on sin we associate sin with like religion and biblical and punishment and this kind of things when it's a, appears as though it's a very real spiritual law as divine truth defines it, to miss the mark of love is to sin. And that's quite, everyone can kind of get behind that, right? If you miss the mark of love, that's a sin. Okay, that, that makes sense. And that atonement or atone or repentance is to feel the weight of that unloving behavior. In, or in, this is thought, word, and deed. This isn't just, you know, you beat someone up in high school. This is, this is, in everyday interactions in and I can't share it in just one video but divine truth goes into it but in all interactions where emotional addictions are played out when expectations are put on people where anger is projected at people for for not meeting your expectations and certain things so that sin go you know it says to the debt must be paid to the uttermost farthing so every single action unloving action has to be worked out for you to find happiness, true happiness and, and, and abundance and uh, be the fullest version of you that you were born to be, you know, uh, what do they call, you know, self-actualization or enlightenment, that will come as a product of facing everything. And he's saying here, this is the full on lesson, it's so much, it's easier to do it on earth while you can, repent or atone or forgive or, or you know to the people around you that the actions have been done to rather than wait to the afterlife and then try to do it through the veil through the barrier <clears throat> and so the next one now faith and reason are the central thought principles of two different spheres of thought in the spirit world faith is the vitalizing principle of religion or ecclesiasticism as reason is of philosophy these two schools of thought, which appear at first sight opposed to each other, are nonetheless capable of being blended in the mental development of the same personality, the properly balanced mind being that in which they are equally proportioned. So it's saying about faith and reason are, are two things we kind of perceive atheism as scientific view and religion as this faith view with non-scientific and actually it's where the two meet, a perfectly balanced mind, a properly balanced mind is where they're in equal proportion. And the reason is the logic is, is the mind and the faith is the kind of heart knowing and that heart perspective and heart sense for me. It says religion and ecclesiasticism, but yeah, for me that's like your spiritual development and your heart sense. And then the reason is your the logic that you apply and it's, you have to have both. And it, it continues where one predominates over the other to a great degree, so where faith or reason predominates the other. The individual, be he mortal or disembodied, disembodied spirit, will be narrow-minded in one direction or the other, and incapable of taking a just view 
of any mental problem. His mind will resemble a two-wheeled gig, which has a big and a little wheel attached to the same axle, and in consequence, neither wheel can make due progress. The mental gig coming to a stop till the defect be remedied. So he's saying if you've got huge faith and not much reason, or huge reason and not much faith or you know heart, I, I feel like it's mind and heart, but that's my translation, then you're just going to go in circles and you're not truly going to progress spiritually as, yeah, as it, as it says, you're not going to be properly balanced mind. So the final quote, which I think was a nice one to close on, builds on that theme in a sense, and it says, such then is the knowledge I have gained, such the beliefs I have arrived at since I passed from earth life, but I cannot say I have seen that any particular belief helps or retards the soul's progress, except insofar as this that some creeds have a tendency to cramp the mind and obscure the clearness of its vision and distort its ideas of right and wrong, thereby preventing those who hold those beliefs from possessing the perfect freedom of thought and absence of prejudice, which can alone fit the soul to rise to the highest spheres. So it's hinting at or, or telling you here to rise to the highest spheres, to grow, to develop self-actualization, Christ, consciousness, whatever you want to call it, is you have to have perfect freedom of thought and be absent from prejudice. And this is something that, that I've, I've intuitively valued and it was, it's cool to see him say how much of a, you know, this is something that is very valuable for, for your spiritual progression, is to be perfect. And that this is just, in any topic you want to go into, in, in let's just keep it real, right? Divine truth is something that I find very valuable, and uh, the main teacher is Jesus. And for many people, that is a turn-off point, right? I can't watch Divine Truth because the guy that's teaching it says he's Jesus, and yet that for me is there's there's prejudice and there's not freedom of thought of the, of knowing where your own beliefs are made up. And I don't want to go on that too much, but it's just knowing where your own beliefs and thoughts come from and where you're being prejudiced without truly having the, that a knowledge of something and knowing what knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know is a very valuable tool and really being honest with yourself about what you know and what you don't know and recognizing when you're putting prejudice on something and claiming you know something and that's that's limiting you is going to limit your your soul's progression so free perfect freedom of thought absence of prejudice is is a tool that's going to help all of us to continue to develop um and so that was the the last quote uh there's a amazon review i thought i'd share because i thought looking on amazon there's some good reviews on there and this was just from one person that gave it five star this fascinating page turner documents the journey of a repentant spirit from the depths of hell to the highest spheres of the spirit world written in the spirit author's own words in the eloquent and uplifting prose of a high order spirit it will captivate and enthrall the reader and certainly give them pause to think long and hard about their purpose on this planet. So, yeah, the, I thought I, it was a page turner, like he said, basically, like, like I said at the start, I felt the same way. So, as recommend, if you have got a Kindle, obviously get it, you know, it's very handy. And I, got, I, I like to get a physical copy and the Kindle version. If I really like a book, I always will get a physical as well. But this copy, uh, the writing, the text is really like, it's quite, it's not massive on the page, so maybe don't, maybe find a different copy than this. Um, but I'll leave that up to you. Or if you don't mind, it, the stories, once you're in a story, you're in it. You know what I mean? You don't really notice once you start. It's like watching a movie with subtitles. Like, at the beginning, it's a little jarring. Then once you're in it, you're in it and you're focused and it's fine. That's A Wanderer in the Spirit Lands by, thank you to Francesco and to A. Farnes, who are probably both in the spirit world. Maybe they're Mets now in... in connected since then. Currently reading two other similar books, one about astral projection that's really cool, another one that's channeled, um, so definitely, I don't know, maybe one a month, something like that, I just want to make the content that, that I'm interested in and when it comes to me, so when I finish one of these books I might review one of them next. And then once I've put those two down, uh, I think I'm going to try and tackle Dante's uh, Inferno or Divine Comedy, um, which seems like a classic and there's lots of cool talks about it on YouTube and it seems just really in the same theme of the stuff that I'm into though it may take a little more brain power to get through it. If anyone's read that and they've got a recommendation of what copy, I think I'm going to read the Chiardi, Chiardi, Chiarda, 
there's a, a translation that that seems to be the most popular for all. I seem to connect with the people that like that version. So if you've read it, or you've got a recommendation, please let me know. Um, if you want, if you're more interested in the spirit world, all the stuff I've shared here, check the podcasts out, the spirit world talk, soul war one podcast. I just did. I put a lot into those podcasts and I kind of condense it all down. So it's, it's a very similar theme. And yeah, other than that, just stay tuned for more content on this channel, um, that I'm into. So the spiritual stuff, uh, the health, I've got some health and physical stuff to come as well. So we'll get back to the more active stuff, get the, the yang moving in the body and keep that moving. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.